Hi guys, um, this is Megan Peters. I'm at UC Irvine, Department of Sciences. Um, hey Wes. Uh, so um, we know each other from there. Uh, so my question is um, about uh, this this idea that you have, especially in the anthropocene, that you have four different cognitively sophisticated behaviors that you're talking about, also related to the kind of fear conditioning, if you will, that, that Wes was showing with his HAL system. So where do we draw the line between physical tuning of a system and actually like learning of cognitive type behaviors? How, how do we distinguish between physical tuning and learning? So first of all, I, I don't believe in, in any lines. I don't think any of this is about drawing sharp lines, but I do think the distinctions are very important. And it's exactly what you said. I think what we're interested here is to say, here are the tools that are already used to study these things in behavioral science. And what we're going to find out is how many of those things usefully port over. So if it turns out that, boy, none of those things, it doesn't do extinction, it doesn't do, you know, it doesn't do any of these things, then you say, fine, then, then that is not where the system lands on that spectrum that I showed you. It lands somewhere else. The, the only use, you know, legitimate use of the terminology is if you've done the experiment and showed that that, that paradigm actually helps you discover new things in the system. Yeah. <clears throat> and just to add on to that, I mean, uh, we know each other from Air Force meetings. So... Uh, the 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 plan now. I mean, we've done other experiments. Um, and just to, just to say, like an asterisk on the end of mine. We're also doing some where we reverse these conditions, or instead of a instead of the reward being no stimulus, we're doing a regular stimulus. You know, we're editing all of that to see kind of how does that change the learning curve. But then, similar to the work Mike talked about it in uh, genetic regulatory networks, where computationally we explored all the different types of classical conditionings. Could you destroy them? Could they come back? Uh, what happens when you break this piece and that piece? Uh, planning on doing all of that in the cultures as well. So essentially we're trying to come up with this suite of tests, basically treating these cultures as animals. Um, and it, so I don't train them for more than like an hour a day. I think they get fatigued. Um, I don't, you know, I make sure that when I feed them, I train them at a certain time. I try not to let them get bored. Uh, I just assume that they are that complex. In the worst case, I'm overcautious. Uh, the best case, I learn something new from it. Because um, what's interesting to me is uh, I made it seem simple that they that these bursts come from the left or just the right, but really they come from specific regions. So there may be like multiple behaviors or things that cause a cascade left or right or multiple start points that go from right to left. Um, and what's interesting to me is I'm looking for something in uh, to, to steal you know, other neuroscience things and, and memory and, and things is what does that engram look like? Because here you have multiple ways to generate kind of the macro scale behavior that I'm looking for. Um, kind of like degeneracy in a sense, like if, if left to right is one behavior, there's multiple ways to get there. Uh, and seeing how, when I do this type of training, dependent upon the, the stimulations that I'm giving, what parts of like the network architecture are rearranging themselves Um and if we can find something in gram like, can you do something like extinction? Uh, could you, in a different context, bring that back up again? Uh, could you switch this kind of learning off and on? Like in context A, I want you to only do right to left. In context B, I want you to do left to right. Uh, can you go back and forth between those things? Uh, what happens when I take the tissue that's been trained and connect it uh, artificially to a tissue that hasn't been trained? Uh, so the answer to the question is just there's a lot of work to do, but the the, the plan is to to take all of that great stuff, especially at this Air Force meeting. Uh, everyone go ask Megan about it. It's a lot of great work there um, and applying all those tools to what we're doing in culture. In addition to all the different training, we, we've, in all of these kinds of cases, we've done uh, um, uh, uh, anesthetics, uh, hallucinogens, uh, anxiolytics, uh, you know, different, different ways to perturb the, the, the perception memory blockers, neurotropics, like all of these things that, that neuroscience use, you can use them in these other cases and ask that question, what, what does, you know, what does it, does it let you discover new things about the system? And, and if so, then, then that's great. I fully agree that people are not used to thinking about mathematical truths as a causal input into things, but, it, it, because biology uses these facts extensively, if we don't accept that uh, that these things are a causal input, then then we're left with a dead end as far as well. What is the, well, well? What is the causal input? And I try to you know I I try to illustrate that with that um, uh, with that Halley plot. 
you know, if 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 you don't think that this pattern exists in 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 some place, or you think there's a physical explanation for it, uh, you, you are not going to find the answer. You could make a catalog and just say, well, that's what it is, and that's that. But 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 the, you, what you're not going to have is an explanation for it because the explanation is not to be found in the physical world. So so for all of these things, I think if we have a choice between uh, wrapping our heads around a, an unconventional causal input and no causal input, and just sort of you know, people say this to me all the time. Oh, that's just the, uh, you know, that property of networks. Yeah, that's just a fact that holds about the world. I, I you know, I, I don't love this idea that we're going to end up with a grab bag of random facts that hold. I think we have to, we have to, you know, uh, assume first that there's a that there's a structure to this and 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 get hold of it. 